Okay, so really all that's left now before we send out our our HQ render is just a few little tips and tricks that I've learned over the years. Um, one is uh, there's the volume filter here. Um, by default, box filter in one is, is pretty good for most circumstances. I do just want to point it out that there's a bunch of different ways we can filter our volumes. Gaussian uh, and 1.5 is, is often recommended, especially if you have lower uh, resolution volumes and you want to squeeze some juice out of them. This can be good. This will help with stair stepping, uh, meaning you have voxels that have like, some voxels have really high density and they're right next to ones that have none. So you might get this kind of like staircase steps as just like when you have a, a low resolution image. This will help blur it around. The 1.5 basically means uh, a 1.5 pixel radius around. Uh, I keep saying pixel, I mean 1.5 voxel radius. It does add a significant amount of render time. Um, if you have a render farm at your disposal, it maybe it can make more sense. I'd say if you're rendering at home, don't bother with it. The, the improvement that it makes is pretty minimal, but I did want to mention that it, it's there in case you need it. Um, I also want to say that we we'll, we want to turn our environment light back on because that, that adds a really nice uh, general tone to it that makes it really feel integrated into the world. Um, although I'm going to turn off the thing in the viewport here. So yeah, so we're just turning our environment light back on and this is going to contribute also to our um, bounce or rather our, our volume limit now as well. So it's going to get brighter because of the direct lighting and it's going to get a little bit brighter again because of that indirect lighting. Um, so let's see what we're getting. And of course it's, it's slowed down somewhat because the environment light's a little harder to calculate. It's not enough to just send a ray from the camera into the volume and then a ray out to the light. It has to send a bunch of rays out at each sample, as we talked about before, um, in order to sample the giant dome that covers it in different places. So this is what it was and this is what it is now. It's getting brighter again. A lot of times and uh, people will find that, well, okay, so why do we want scattering? Why do we want the scattering on our image here in particular? Well, we want it because we have this glowing thing on the inside. I don't know, this could be a headlight, this could be a street lamp, um, this could be a firefly, this could be tracers from a bullet. And when we do uh, actual combustion stuff later, this will you know, absolutely be fire or lightning or who knows what. So the point is, so why do we want scattering? It's because it's those really bright spots that are, are usually where we want to see the scattering happen. We're not probably as interested in the distant lights scatter. Like, we don't really care as much about this. It's just make everything brighter and maybe everything a little washed out. Same thing with this environment light. I mean, you can see it's pretty even and uninteresting. Um, and that's taking time. That's taking render time. And it's also not really contributing particularly positive, positively to the look, whereas this one is. This is contributing something particularly interesting to us. So what we can do, and I'm just going to cancel this, we can disable the contribution from for any light. And speaking of disable, I'm just going to delete the spotlight ones and for all because we're not using it. We can disable the uh, contribution of any any kind of contribution from any kind of light. So here it is, the aptly named contributions area. Um, it's not, it's a little unintuitive, but the way we can do that is we can choose indirect lighting from here. So there's that indirect vex variable again, and we actually don't want it. So we actually, we create the contribution and then we turn it off. So now it knows don't provide indirect lighting. The point light we do, so we're going to leave him alone. But the environment light as well, we don't want his contribution. So we're going to go to indirect, turn it off. So now when we render, you're going to see um, those image planes are going to be blank. The indirect for the direct lighting, or rather the indirect for the distant light and the indirect for, um, there we go. See how it's making black. We're still getting it for the point light, as you can see. And we're also not getting it for the environment light. So at that point, it's really up to you how you want to handle it. I mean, it's not the end of the world to pass on, you know, these blank image plans. You probably don't need to, and it might make your compositor confused as to why they're there. 
they won't actually adversely affect your image but if you wanted to you could disable them here with this indirect so instead of doing export variable for each light you could just choose your light specifically here and just say oh I just want that point light and then not have these extra planes but in any case um, I think I probably actually do usually just pass the plank ones downstream don't tell anybody though okay so you can see it's where it's removed some of that extra wash light and we still have that so that's uh those are some pro tips for you there and once again I'm not gonna wait for that um, the very last thing is if you have uh, velocity volumes which we do from our simulation before velocity X Y and Z um, of course that was the direction everything was moving in especially if it's quick moving you'll probably want to render it with motion blur motion blur again is one of those things don't waste your time on it until you're close to the end but once you are close to the end yeah throw the uh, allow motion blur on and if you have those velocity volumes it'll find it and it will streak the density in that voxel by the amount of velocity it found in the voxel um, if you're starting from the cloud, well, you're not going to have the velocity thing, but, um, you know, so it goes. And that's it. It's, uh, it is going to add a significant amount of render time on, but um, it's, it's kind of necessary to make it have a, you know, that filmic look to it. And that's, uh, we're ready to go. So just make sure that you've got, uh, you're pointing to somewhere else so we don't override our, our stuff from before. Um, Maybe set this to HQ if your computer can handle it. Otherwise, LQ will probably still look pretty good. And um, I think I'm going to stick to LQ myself. And uh, there it goes. I'll see you. I'll see you tomorrow probably, depending on how long this takes.